Hello there modelers and welcome again. Well, it's time for another Trekworks Star Trek model kit review. And this one's an oldie but a goodie. This one's from 1979. This is the Star Trek The Motion Picture Klingon Cruiser from AMT. Uh, we see here on the side panel, this one says 1979 Lesney Products Corporation. So they may have had a sub-partner. AMT may have been... Uh, co-owned by a different entity by that time, by 1979, but maybe just before they went to AMT Ertl. Um, this kit is uh, right around 1650 scale, somewhere in that neighborhood. And uh, they, they brought this model and the USS Enterprise refit model out uh, just after the movie was released to promote the movie and uh, they knew the products were going to be hot. Um, little story behind this ship, um, when Star Trek the original series was cancelled, a few years later, it started being kicked around for an idea to, to uh, bring Star Trek back as a TV show once it was kind of being popular again in reruns. And uh, Paramount decided that uh, they originally were going to do this in a uh, movie of the month format so that you would basically like the old Columbo and the old, uh, some of you, some of you old timers like me will remember Macmillan and Wife, all those shows that were like on once a month, like a movie of the month. They were going to do Star Trek in the same format because the budget was assumed to be so high on it. They wanted to do a pretty high quality version of it and uh, see what that led up to. So uh, Gene Roddenberry is told to gather up the team. They brought the original cast back. Uh, they had everybody signed up, including a couple new people, except, curiously, Leonard Nimoy. And he didn't, uh, at, the, at the original start of it, show much interest. So a whole other side story. They were recasting some different people for that role, for a new Vulcan role on the bridge. But long story short, they started looking at some of the original props from the original show to see if they could be uh, used for the updated version and uh, it was decided pretty quickly that the, both the Enterprise and all the uh, other familiar ships such as the Klingon and the Romulan ships were going to have to be redesigned so work began on that and uh, what happened was is about uh, three quarters of the way through everything Paramount decided to scrap the whole idea and go with a major motion picture instead and so completely new and much more advanced, more detailed models were built of both the Enterprise refit, which we all have come to know and love, and also the Klingon cruiser, now known, now known as the Katinga class, which uh, is a uh, uh, descendant of the uh, original D7. And as we can see in this picture here, it is much, much more detailed than the original D7. And we saw we see all this lighting on here now. We see much. Uh, uh, detail as, as far as uh, decking and different layers to the ship, the, the really, really cool markings up here on the top, and just the overall much more weathered and used battle kind of worn, uh, very sinister look of this ship, and it's just really, really cool. They came out, just, uh, they just took your breath away when they had that opening scene in the motion picture. Uh, they were really fantastic. And they were trying to do that to be on par with the Star Wars and the detail of the Star Wars ship, so... Uh, it was a pretty big leap on their part, and they did an outstanding job on the models. They've come to be known as classics now. A um, couple more interesting things about this particular kit. Now, they, uh, in this particular one, uh, AMT was, was marketing a new uh, uh, rainbow effect decal, and I'll, I'll open this box here and show you what this is. Uh, basically, it's a kind of holographic, uh, you know, swirl cut uh, chrome piece of sticker that they've they put some red on there and you're supposed to use this for this part up here going behind the grill on the uh, impulse deck and then these these other four here at the back at the exhaust ports and it's supposed to give kind of a simulation of it of it moving or swirling or something like that they're kind of poorly done and not very well accepted uh, not many people wanted putting them on they kind of like more like they should go on a kid's bike or something like that um, and here we have the the uh, second thing that was marketed by AMT, and this is the uh, new rub down transfer decals. Well, um, these were basically a flop, and I don't think there were many other kits after this that came with these decals. They may have continued it for a while in some other mod uh, automotive model kits and things like that, but I don't think it appeared much longer in any of the Star Trek kits. These were uh, just horrible to work with. They didn't stick. The colors on them looked kind of cartoonish, and uh, most people that built these either did their own paint on insignias or they did uh, they went with some aftermarket decals so some kind of interesting things there we'll take a look at some of these parts um, first up is the stand and uh, I'll point out that there's some interesting things about that um, back on the original uh, I do have a review up of, up of that somewhere in my archives there if you care to look for it from 1966 original Klingon cruiser kit and the original 66 Enterprise kits 
Both came with this particular stand when they were originally released, only they were molded in clear, and uh, they were great stands. I mean, they were a lot nicer stand than what we wound up with in the uh, uh, the entire uh, line of uh, Enterprise and Klingon Cruiser kits that we saw from AMT after the original first release up until uh, this particular one here in 1979, uh, where the standard kind of three uh, three-legged monster, if you want to call it, the center bar with the two uh, Star Trek de kind of delta shapes there, and it was just a horrible uh, stand for the Enterprise, and even more horrible, the kind of little jungle gym looking one that you built for the Klingon cruiser, just a, just a really horrible design. These are a really nice sturdy stand, like I said. They dropped it, and then they brought it back again uh, in 1979 for this kit, and as well as the Enterprise kit that was, uh, the refit Enterprise kit that was released at the same time. And uh, taking a look at these nacelles, we can see right off the bat that there's just a huge difference in the detail level uh, versus the original D7 kit by AMT. There's just a whole bunch of engine detail going on here. This kit was just absolutely made to be lit. Uh, you can see that they've made these areas here in this uh, warp nacelle area very, very thin, so it's easy to go in here with a Dremel tool and, and kind of knock this out and mix up some green resin, or I'm sorry, some green acrylic and lay it in there and put your LEDs off to the sides here and you'll have that same nice green effect uh, that, that we saw on the ship on the big screen. And uh, taking a look at the uh, forward section parts here, you've got all this really beautiful nice markings and raised uh, shapes and outlines on the forward section of the bridge here. And we've also got the top section here. Now one thing that's not exactly accurate on this model, and there's quite a few aftermarket uh, parts available for this one, uh, is the bridge section here. The tower at the top, curiously, is still exactly like the original D7 cruiser. And uh, if you look closely at the uh, at the ships at the beginning, the, the Katinga ships at the beginning of the motion picture as they come towards you and you get that up close view, you see that the tower has a nice kind of raised shape to it and there's a little uh, rectangular red like viewing port or window there at the, at the center of it and it just looks really cool and menacing when it's coming towards you. And there are aftermarket parts out there available to uh, replicate that and make this more authentic. But other than that, other than that detail there, the rest of it uh, is uh, pretty pretty nice. Uh, we'll see here on the neck, we've just got these, like, again, more of these really, really cool shapes here that you can just do some subtle uh, uh, shading and different color work on there when you build this up and just really, really make it pop when you uh, uh, do your paint job on it. And here on the bottom, we've got this beautiful uh, uh, shapes that, you know, meant to look kind of like bird feathers or something like that. Just, you know, it's just a really neat idea. And usually what you'll see these done, there'll be a, a really nice Klingon insignia painted on right here. And so that, uh, that looks pretty nice. Here's an interesting uh, little promotional from 1979. Um, this is the, uh, some Star Trek posters that were available. Um, Looks like uh, possibly, yeah, it's, uh, there's a nice cutaway. I was just trying to see if this maybe was a later version, but uh, nope, 1979. I don't see any movies on here after the motion picture, so this is the original one from 79. And uh, you get a nice Enterprise uh, refit cutaway poster there, or nice shot of the original refit, and some stuff from the, uh, from the motion picture. You've got the Enterprise up there, and then the... The Vulcan, Spock's Vulcan shuttle depicted here down at the bottom, so that's pretty cool. And uh, I'm sure those posters, if they're original, are probably worth something now, people that have them. So anyway, that's a quick look around this kit, and uh, one thing I'll mention about it, uh, again, this, this kit was later re-released uh, as the Klingon Cruiser Kronos 1 from Star Trek The Undiscovered Country by AMT Ertl. I can't tell you exactly what year that one popped up, but I want to say it was around 92, 93, 94 maybe. And um, that kit uh, is exactly the same as this one as far as the plastic goes, just the box is different. Now you can still pick this kit up on eBay. Uh, if you're looking for one that uh, has a mint condition box, you can expect to pay 50 or 60, maybe even $70 for it. Uh, if you're not too concerned about the box, you should be able to find one for around the 20 to maybe $35 range, uh, just if you want the plastic. And then another option, like I said, is the, the later edition Kronos 1, Undiscovered Country, uh, Klingon Cruiser. It's the same model, um, and uh, it seems to be more readily available. And the prices are any I've seen them as low as ten dollars up to twenty-five, thirty dollars for that one. So, uh, it, but if you want the box, you're kind of a collector. I like to have these old boxes, uh, and uh, so that's just kind of you know I've had this one for probably fifteen years. So 
Uh, anyway, it's just never got around to building it. I built a, I built the later version, the, the uh, Kronos one, and uh, did a few modifications to make it a little bit more accurate. But other than that, that's the ship. And uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's, I think it's always fun to go back and take a look at these really classic kits. And uh, we'll be doing quite a few more reviews. I've got uh, a whole model, a stack of models down here, some of the older stuff that, uh, that we'll be doing reviews on. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. So until next time, everyone, happy modeling.